Hey guys, it's Miss Miklos. Um, today we're going to be going into something totally different, and we're looking at section 7.4, which deals with what we call matrices. And most of you haven't really dealt with a matrix before, but matrices is the plural of a matrix. So let's go ahead and look at what the definition of a matrix actually is. So it says if M and N are positive integers, then an M by N matrix is in a rectangular array. And to me that sounds a little bit confusing. And so I just want to kind of point out here that this first, the M represents the number of rows. So here we have this many rows. And then the N is going to represent the number of columns. And if you're someone that gets rows and columns confused, um, I always think of Greek architecture and how a column goes straight up and down. So a column here also goes straight up and down. And the other thing that we're going to notice here, we have um, these entries in the matrix are A sub and then these 31, 32. And what the heck does that mean? And so what that means, this is A sub RC. So what that means is this is going to tell us exactly where the entry goes. It's going to tell us the row and the column. For example, A sub 2, 3 means row 2, column 3. So it's right here. So it's important for us to remember A sub RC. As I already mentioned, the dimensions, we need to remember it is row by column. So that's just something that we need to have memorized. Notice that this notation, row and column, it's the same order as when we're looking at the entries. So we're going to start off with some really simple stuff. Okay, all we're doing here is we are going to determine what is the dimension of each particular matrix. And then we're going to go into some more difficult things, but knowing dimensions is super important. So for A, we just have a single number. So we have one row and one column. So I'm going to say this is a one by one matrix. For B, it looks like we have one row and I have one, two, three, four columns. So we would say this is a one by four. Hopefully we're getting the hang of this. For C, I have two rows and two columns. So that would be a two by two matrix. D, we have one, two, three rows. And we have one, two columns. So that would be a three by two matrix. And lastly here, E, I have one, two, three rows. And I only have one column. So it is a three by one. So when we see this notation, um, that's all it means. It's telling us how many rows are there, how many columns are there. So why are we talking about matrices today when we've just been focusing on solving equations? It's a good question, and hopefully this um, information kind of narrows that down for us. I didn't mean to make that go crazy there. Okay, so here's just an example of a system of equations. So we have three equations. Notice I have three different variables. We're going to work today with what we call an augmented matrix. And what an augmented matrix is it is a matrix that's going to have one row for each equation and one column for each variable and the constant. So if we look, this first column I'm going to call the x column. These values are coming from the coefficients of x's. Our second column, I'm going to write y there because these values are the y coefficients. Notice I'm missing a y in this third equation, so we put a zero there. Our third one, you guessed it, is the z coefficients. And then last but not least, we draw this little dotted line and we'll kind of see why that becomes important. That's just separating um, our coefficient matrix from what we call our constant matrix. And these are all the constants. And you can see these terms I just mentioned. The coefficient matrix are the first three columns. The constant ma matrix just represents this last set of numbers. So we're going to go ahead and take this particular matrix, I'm sorry, this particular system of equations, and transform it into an augmented matrix. 
So my first column is going to be all of the x coefficients. So I'm going to write 1. And then I notice I don't have an x in this second equation, so I'm going to fill in a 0. And then I'm going to put a 1 in for that third equation. For our second column in our matrix, I'm going to get all the y coefficients. So I'm going to write 3, negative 1, and in this third one I'm going to write 0 because I do not have a y value. And then next I'm going to write all the z values. So I have 0, 4, negative 5. I'm going to draw a little dashed line. And then our final column are going to be these three constants. So I have 9, negative 2, and 0. So that's all we need to do to transform something into an augmented matrix. The reason why we do this is sometimes it's just easier for us to work with numbers than to deal with um, x's and y's and z's and all those variables. If I had to talk about the dimensions of this matrix, I notice, once again, it's row by column. So I have one, two, three rows, and it looks like we have four columns. So I would say that this is a three by four matrix. So now with our matrices, we're going to work on our elementary row operations. And these three things should look really familiar to us. We learned them last lecture. In fact, last lecture they might have seemed weird because it's like, why are we talking about rows and not equations? And today, hopefully, we can see why we're dealing with rows. So the three things we can do, we can interchange any two rows, so we can just switch any two rows. We can multiply one row by a non-zero constant. And we can also add a multiple of one row to another row. So this first one, it says interchange the first and second rows. So I'm going to start, I'm just going to call this r sub 1, r sub 2, let me make my 1 a little bigger there, and r sub 3. Okay, so this, kind of like last time where we called it like equation 1 was e sub 1, here we're just talking about the rows. So if they're asking me to go ahead and transform this, I know first of all, row 3 is staying the same. So I'm going to write row 3 in there. And then we're going to write this notation where I'm going to write r sub 2 as the first row now and r sub 1 as the second row. And I'm using these arrows to represent that we just switched them. So row 1 was 0, 1, 3, 4. And row 2 is negative 1, 2, 0, 3. This notation becomes important when we're talking about um, grading your work and as you guys go through some of your suggested problems, um, it's helpful if you know the correct notation. Number two. Okay, so, so number one, we kind of focus on that first thing we can do. Number two, it says multiply the first row of the equation by one half. So our, our original matrix is r sub one, r sub two, and r sub three. And if I want to multiply this by 1 half, I'm going to write 1 half r sub 1. My r sub 2 and r sub 3 are going to stay exactly the same, so I'm just going to rewrite those. And all this means is I'm going to distribute a 1 half to each of these terms. So 1 half times 2 is 1. 1 half times negative 4 is negative 2. 1 half times 6 gives us 3, and then 1 half times negative 2 gives us negative 1. So right now we're just focusing on using these um, row operations. Towards the end of notes today we'll see why we need to use them, but now we're just practicing to make sure that we're okay with it. Number 3, it says add negative 2 times the first row of the original matrix to the third row. So once again, I'm going to call this r sub 1, r sub 2, and r sub 3. First thing I notice, it tells me to do negative 2 times the first row. So off on the side or down below, I'm just going to distribute a negative 2 to that first row, which would be 0, negative 2, negative 6, negative 8. So now when they tell me to add that 
to the third row, I'm going to take this specific row and add it to row three. So our new matrix, I'm going to write R sub one exactly the same and R sub two exactly the same. What's changing here is I'm doing negative two row one plus row three. So I have zero plus two, which is two. Negative two plus negative three is negative five. I don't know why I was going there. Um, negative six plus four is negative two. And negative eight plus one would give us negative seven. Okay, so we've kind of seen all three of those row operations. Next thing we're gonna do on number four, and we'll see this in the homework, um, they're giving us the original matrix and the new row equivalent matrix. And we need to figure out what happened in order to get the new matrix. Okay, so the way that I go through these problems, I normally look at our new row equivalent matrix to figure out which row actually changed. So looking at this, I can see that row two is the same. It is row one that changed. So there's two things that we could have possibly done. First of all, we could have multiplied row one by a constant value, and that would change into our second matrix here. Or it could be that we multiplied row two by a constant value and added it to row one, and that's what gave me this value. So, um, obviously it's easiest to think about if we just multiplied by a constant. So I would ask myself questions like, what times three would give me zero? And obviously that would be three times zero. So if I multiplied this whole row by zero, does that give me this row? And I can definitely see it does not do that. So I know that I didn't just multiply by a constant. So Clearly, I multiplied this row by something and added it. So I need to think to myself, what could I add to 3 to give me 0? Because 3 plus something gave me 0. And so only negative 3 could be that value. Now, right now, this looks like a 1. So now I need to think even further, okay, what times 1 would give me negative 3? So I'm thinking that maybe we did negative three times row one, I'm sorry, by row two, and added it to row one. So this is just kind of my thought process. That's something you don't need to write out. You could just think about it in your head. So let's see if that works. Okay, negative three times one is negative three, plus three is zero. Negative three times negative one is three, three plus four is seven. Negative three times negative three is nine. Nine plus nine is 18. So my answer here is going to be negative three times row two plus row one. If I were you, I would pause this video right now and try and do B on your own and then check back and make sure that you're doing it right. So hopefully you have the right answer now. And looking at this, it doesn't look like we change row two. It looks like we change row one. So I would start by going, okay, four times what would give me two? So at this point, I'm thinking, okay, did we do one half times row one? So let's check. Four times one half is two. Negative three times one half is negative three halves. So clearly, we did not go ahead and do this. So now I'm thinking I multiplied by something to row two and added it to row one. So four plus what would give us two? Because I know four is what I start with, two is what I have to end up with. So I'm thinking this would have to be negative two. Four plus negative two is two. So now I'm thinking, okay, this is a negative one. So negative one times what? would give me negative two. So I'm thinking this time that would be two times row two plus row one. And let's go ahead and check this. Negative one times two is negative two plus four is two. Three times two is six plus negative three is three. 
2 times 12 is 24, plus negative 5 is 19. Okay, so a lot of this is just a way of thinking. Definitely, if you're struggling with that concept, please come and see me to get some additional help. Okay, so now we're going to put all of this together, and we're going to use something that we call Gauss-Jordan elimination. And this is a new method for solving a system of linear equations. And yes, um, some of you guys may think as we're going through this, why would I ever use this method when I could use elimination or substitution? And I would agree with you. Um, however, the reason why we need to practice with two by twos is because three by three systems can kind of be a mess regardless of what method we use. So Gauss-Jordan is actually a decent method to use for those. And so we really need to practice this concept on two by twos before we get into three by threes. So off to this side here, um, this is kind of what we're going to be doing, the steps that we're going to follow. So we're going to start by setting up the augmented matrix. And we already practiced that. And then our goal is to get the goal matrix, which is 1, 0, 0, 1. And whatever's left over is going to be our ordered pair x, y. When we go through this, we always start with column 1, and then column 2, etc. We also, just a reminder, we want to get the 1 first, then get the zeros. So that's kind of our game plan. We're going to go column by column, column 1, then column 2. And we want to get this one first and then the zero. Then when we move on, we're going to get this one and then this zero. So just a reminder, there are three rules that we can use, three elementary row operations. We can interchange any rows, or we can multiply one row by a constant. These are things we do in order to get a one. The other operation we can do, we can add a multiple of one row to another row, and that is what we use to get a zero. Okay, so keep referring back to this. We don't have to have this memorized like step by step, but we need to know what to do when we're going through the problem. Okay, so looking at number one, the very first thing I'm going to do is set this up as an augmented matrix. So I have my X column, my Y column, and my constants. So we said that we need to start with column one, and my goal is to transform this three into a one. So I'm thinking what we can do here is one third times row one. Okay, so I'm keeping row two exactly the same, and I'm just going to multiply everything in this first row by one third. So I would get one, two thirds, and 10 thirds. So we have accomplished our first goal, which was getting a one here. My second goal, I want to make this two into a zero because remember our goal matrix here is one, zero, zero, one. So looking at this, I'm thinking, and I'm gonna write this off to this side here, I'm gonna do negative two times row one, and I'm going to add it to row two. Now why would I think negative two? The reason being is because um, we will always have a one in that spot, so I'm going to multiply it by the opposite of two. Taking a step back, why did we use one third? Well, one third is the reciprocal of three. So some things that we're gonna see here, when I'm trying to get a one, I can multiply by the reciprocal. When I'm trying to get a zero, I'm going to multiply the other row by a constant and then add it. So when I multiply by negative 2, I get negative 2, negative 4 thirds, negative 20 thirds. And I'm making those negatives a little bigger. And I'm doing that off to the side because in our real matrix here, um, that row isn't changing at all. So now I'm going to add negative 2 plus 2 is 0. And I'm going to write what we're doing here. We're doing negative 2 row 1 plus row 2. Negative 4 thirds plus 5. I know 5 is like 15 thirds, so this would be 11 thirds. 
negative 20 thirds plus, um, sorry, negative 20 thirds plus 3. 3 is like 9 thirds, so I get negative 11 thirds. So we are done with column 1. We have 1, 0. Now we're going to move on to column 2. So I want to transform this 11 thirds into a 1. So we learned earlier that to get rid of a value to make it into a 1, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to do 3 11 times row 2. Notice row 1 there is staying the same. When I distribute 3 11 I get 0, 1, and negative 1. My last job is to make this into a zero. So I'm thinking here, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna rewrite out that first, or I'm sorry, that second row, cause that's kind of set. I'm thinking we could do negative two thirds times row two plus row one. Why would I do negative two thirds? Well, negative two thirds is the opposite of two thirds. So adding that's going to give me zero. So off to the side here, when I do negative 2 thirds times row 2, I get 0, negative 2 thirds, positive 2 thirds. So 0 plus 1, I get 1. Negative 2 thirds plus 2 thirds, I get 0. 2 thirds plus 10 thirds, I get 12 thirds, which is 4. So this is telling me that our solution is 4, negative 1. Now, if I plug that back into both equations, I would get 12 minus 2 is 10, 8 minus 5 is 3, so it does work. Okay, so just kind of to recap, we go column by column. To get 1s, we multiply that row by the reciprocal. To get zeros, we multiply the other row by the opposite value and add it. So, let's look at number 2 here. So number two, it says um, give two methods for a sub one one to be equal to one. Remember, a sub one one means the entry in row one, column one. So if I'm starting here, you guys might have written two, negative one, four, one, three, negative five. One thing we could do, I could do one half times row one. Okay, if I multiplied this entire thing by one half, that would give me a one here. Or what I'm going to do, which is easier, we could switch R1 and R sub two. Because remember, we said that it's okay to switch any two rows. So this would give me one, three, negative five, two, negative one, four. So this step is really only good for getting that very first one, um, but now I don't have to do anything else to get a one there. So we're gonna focus now on this two. So I need to think to myself, okay, that first row is fine. What could I add to two to make it into a zero? And I'm thinking that we're going to do negative two, times row one plus row two. So off to the side here, I'm gonna do negative two times row one, and that would give me negative two, negative six, positive 10. So two plus negative two is zero. Negative one plus negative six is negative seven. 10 plus four is 14. So we are good with column one. Now we're moving on. I want to focus on this negative seven because we always do the ones first. I need to make this into a one. So what I'm thinking here is that I can go ahead and multiply negative one seventh times row two. So just a reminder, when we're getting a one, we want to multiply by the reciprocal. So when I distribute, I get zero, one, negative two. Lastly, we need to change this three into a zero. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, why don't we just multiply by zero? And the reason why we don't is because that would eliminate this one and it would not give us x, y is the answer there anymore. 
So I'm thinking we would need to add negative three. So I'm going to do negative three times row two plus row one. The reason why I'm being pretty meticulous with my work here is this way, if I make a mistake somewhere, it's easy for me to go back and check my work and it's easy for me to follow along. I'm doing all my work. Um, I'm doing like one matrix for each step. When we get into our three by threes, yes, we're going to do more with this. Um, I'm going to skip a few steps. Hopefully we're kind of getting the hang of this and, um, just to condense some space. If you want to write out a new matrix for every single step, totally fine. Okay, so negative three times row two would give me zero, negative three, six. So zero plus one is one. Negative three plus three is zero. Six plus negative five is one. So that gives us a solution of one negative two. Let's double check this. Two plus two is four, that is true. One minus six is negative five, that is also true. So if I had a test and I had like open-ended, solve using whatever method you want, uh, I would definitely would use elimination or substitution over this, but it's important that we know how to use this method as well. Okay, so our last two examples here are going to be three by threes. And I want you guys to go ahead and write out the goal matrix for a three by three. And there we go. If we look in this first column, it's one, zero, zero, then zero, one, zero, 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 one. And you guys might be wondering, why does this work? And that's because this is just saying X is equal to X, Y is equal to Y, and Z is equal to Z, because those other variables are canceled out. Okay. So we're going to have to start with an augmented matrix here. So my first column is going to be 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2, 3, negative 5, 3, 1, 5, 9, negative 2, 17. The good news is we already have a 1 here, so we are in great shape. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rewrite that first row. 1, negative 2, 3, and 9. Now, we need to get a 0 here and a 0 here, and it really doesn't matter which one we do first. Um, I normally like to go in order, so I'm going to start here by doing row 1 plus row 2, because I notice 1 plus 1 is going to give me 0. Negative 2 plus 3 is going to give me 1, 3 plus 1 is going to give me 4. 9 plus negative 2 is going to give us positive 7. I almost said negative 7, but I would have been wrong. Okay, now, the way that I'm going to condense this is I'm, I'm also going to find our new third row using a similar method. So since we have a 2 here, I'm thinking we're going to have to do negative 2 times row 1 plus row 3. So off to the side here, I'm going to do negative 2 times row 1, and I get negative 2, positive 4, negative 6, negative 18. So if I add these, negative 2 plus 2 is 0. 4 plus negative 5 is negative 1. Negative 6 plus 5 is negative 1. Negative 18 plus 17 is, you guessed it, negative 1. So if we look, we have completed our first matrix, or first column there, because I have it down to be 1, 0, 0. So now our next goal, moving on to column 2. I want this to be a 1, and it already is, which makes me really happy, because if I can skip steps, I want to. So now I need to get a zero here and a zero here. So I'm thinking to get a zero in row one, I'm going to do two times row two plus row one. So when I'm multiplying, I always tend to use the one um, that we've already found the one for, just because it makes it easy because we're going to have some zeros and we know that we're dealing with the one, so I think less about it. So off to the side here, I'm going to do 2 times row 2, which would give me 
0, 2, 8, 14. So, 0 plus 1 is 1. 2 plus negative 2 is 0. 8 plus 3 is 11. 14 plus 9 is 23. Next step, I want to make this negative 1 into a 0, so I'm going to do row 2 plus row 3. So 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus negative 1 is 0. 4 plus negative th 1 is 3. 7 plus negative 1 is 6. So now we've accomplished column 1 and column 2, so we're going to move on to column 3. I want to go ahead and change this 3 into a 1. So, I'm going to multiply 1 third times row 3. So I'm going to get 0, 0, 1, 2. So this row now is completely done. I need to now transform these two into 0. So let's start with row 1. Row 1, I want to get rid of this 11. So I'm thinking I'm going to do negative 11 times row 3 plus row 1. So off to the side here, I'm going to write out what is negative 11 times row 3. And I'm going to use our new row here, just because it looks nice. So I get 0, 0, negative 11, negative 22. So let's add these. 0 plus 1 is 1. 0 plus 0 is 0. Negative 11 plus 11 is 0. Negative 22 plus 23 is 1. So, we're good. Now, last step, I need to transform this 4 to become a 0. So I'm thinking we could do negative 4 times row 3 plus row 2. So hopefully we're seeing these patterns that we're using these same steps almost every single time. So when I multiply row 3 by negative 4, I get 0, 0, negative 4, negative 8. So let's add these. 0 plus 0 gives me 0. 0 plus 1 gives me 1. Negative 4 plus 4 gives me 0. Negative 8 plus 7 gives me negative 1. So this gives us an ordered triple of 1, negative 1, 2. Now, let's go ahead and double check this answer. There we go. Okay, and sorry about the noise. Uh, my window's up and in. It's, today was trash day, so people are bringing their trash back, trash cans back in. Anyways, okay, one, negative one, two. I would get one plus two, which is three, plus six is nine, so that does work. Negative one minus three, so negative four plus two is negative two. Two plus five, which is seven, plus 10 is 17. So it does work in all three equations. And as I said before, um, like all three by three methods take a lot of time. So this one doesn't take like more time than some of the other methods we'll see. So this could be your favorite method for three by threes. Okay, and let's do one more here. And I want to stress, if you're having a tough time with this, please come see me sometime. So I'm going to start by making this one, zero, negative three, negative five. 3, 1, negative 2, negative 4. 2, 2, 1, negative 2. Good news. I already have a 1 here. So in my next matrix, I'm going to rewrite out that first row because it is good to go. Okay, now I need to make this 3 into a 0. So I'm going to do negative 3 times row 1 plus row 2. So off to the side, I'm going to do negative 3 times row 1, which would be negative 3, 0, 9, 15. So negative 3 plus 3 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 9 plus negative 2 
is seven. And I'm going to let you guys know right now, I actually went through this whole problem and treated this as negative seven and got a totally wrong answer. So I just want to stress to you guys how easy it is to make little um, mistakes. So we really want to take our time. Okay, 15 plus negative four gives me 11. So next thing I want to change, I want to change this two right here into a zero. So I'm going to do negative two times row one plus row two. So off to the side here, negative two times row one gives me negative two, zero, six, ten. So negative two plus two is zero. Zero plus two is two. Six plus one is seven, ten plus negative two is eight. Okay, so now looking at my next row, this is nice because, I'm sorry, my next column. We have a one, we have one of the zeros already. So I'm gonna go ahead and write in those two rows. And now I just need to change this two into a zero. So I'm thinking we could do negative two, row two, plus row three. So off to the side here, I'm gonna do negative two times row two, and I would get zero, negative two, negative 14, negative 22. So zero plus zero is zero. Negative two plus two is zero. Negative 14 plus seven is negative seven. Negative 22 plus eight gives me negative 14. Okay, so moving on here to our final column that we need to transform. Um, I know this needs to become a one, so I'm thinking we could do one, I'm sorry, negative one seventh times row three, and I would get zero, zero, one, two. To make this seven into a zero, or why don't we do the negative three first? Let's make that negative three into a zero. So I'm gonna do three, times row three plus row one. So three times row three would give us, it would definitely not give us one there. It would give us zero, zero, three, six. So zero plus one is one. Zero plus zero is zero. Three plus negative three is zero. 6 plus negative 5 is 1. Next thing I need to do, I need to turn this 7 into a 0. So I'm going to do negative 7 times row 3 plus row 2. So if we did negative 7 times row 3, I would get 0, 0, negative 7, negative 14. You guys might notice that that's what we previously had up here. So if you had just seen that and added these two rows together, that would be fine. Okay, when I combine these, I get 0, 1, 0, 11 minus 14 is negative 3. So I'm thinking 1, negative 3, 2 should be our solution. And let's try this out. Okay, 1 minus 6 is negative 5. And just so you guys know, when I did this incorrectly earlier, it worked in the first two equations. It just didn't work in the third one. So that's why we need to check all three. 3 minus 3 gives us 0, minus 4 is negative 4. 2 minus 6 is negative 4, plus 2 is negative 2. So it does work. This is our solution. Okay, so this is the type of problem you guys are going to be doing um, on your homework tonight. As I said earlier, definitely come and ask me if you have questions or need assistance on anything.